for creating any virtual machines you need to have some sort of a hypervisor or virtual machine monitor software installed on your local machine for this example I'm going to use VMware player and I go to this URL that I have highlighted and you can download appropriate version depending upon your operating system so for example here you have a version for Windows and then subsequent versions for Linux operating systems so in my case I have downloaded the VMware player this 5 version and I just click on the downloaded software and install on my local machine so it's taking a little while I'll just walk through the steps I'm also installing it here for the first time on my this machine I have installed it on Linux but let's see how it goes on Windows so I don't want to check for product updates help improve VMware for now I just don't want it to go and start connecting and just keep the defaults for remaining options and say finish so it takes few minutes maybe less than a minute okay so finally it has installed now for creating a virtual machine we will launch VMware player from the start menu so this is the first time you are running it it will ask you to accept the license you say ok here and here you have a bunch of options you can open an existing virtual machine which you might have created or we can create a new one so in our case let's go and create a new virtual machine so we'll so it has several options here about for allowing you to install a new virtual machine so we'll use some ISO image of a Linux operating system that I have downloaded I'll use Ubuntu's uh, ISO image so I select the location of my ISO file and it automatically detects the operating system in this case in case of Ubuntu Linux I'll just say Balwinder username let's say user1 password user123 user123 for this demonstration and give them name to this virtual machine we'll keep the default here and here you can specify the virtual disk capacity that it will allocate on your local hard disk physical hard disk it will create a files up to this much of uh, size total size of all the files so it could actually have two options whether it can allocate the entire 20 GB as is the default selected here as a single file or it can split and as and when it needs more space it will keep allocating in the chunks so we'll stick with the default option of allocation by chunks but I'll reduce the size to let's say 8 GB and go next here it shows what are the default configurations and you can customize this thing so here the memory you can customize by default we'll just keep it uh, 1 GB worth of memory and you could uh, use the slider to adjust it and here next thing is you can change the number of processors it will show how many cores are available so those many processor it will try to list for our demonstration let's change it to two processor cores and then you can have the customization for virtualization engine we'll keep it as default but you have several options here binary translation Intel VTX etc depending upon your physical CPU so let's go with the default one and other interesting thing that you should do is the network configuration and the default configuration for any virtual machine in VMware player will be NAT that is network address translation where from the from within the virtual machine you may be able to go out to any network the computer you can access the internet for example but uh, if you want to access this virtual machine from outside that may not be possible unless you have done some other uh, hackish configuration so the best thing here to do is use a bridged mode in case of bridged mode it will behave like a regular machine connected to the LAN on which your actual physical machine is connected and you can further configure uh, this thing by looking at the advanced where you can generate the MAC address let's say we click on generate it will generate some MAC address for your uh, bridged networking and you can limit the bandwidth etc we'll just keep unlimited for outgoing as well as incoming and similarly there are other options for controlling sound card etc and display 
and so on where you can specify whether you want to accelerate 3d graphics etc and monitors uh, monitor setting can be configured and so on but we'll keep default for all of these remaining configuration we just change the network configuration to bridged and processors I changed and memory we kept default and again all of these configurations can be changed later as well even after creating your virtual machine so just let's go further from here so once I have customized you just say finish and it will try to start the virtual machine by by using the ISO file that I have created and here it flags you all the removable devices that are available and it asks me for a proxy because I'm connected through proxy so I'll just uh, probably let go of this and it was showing all the removable devices that are connected to my machine on which I am creating this virtual machine it automatically detects what peripherals are available so I'm just going to say OK here and let it install so once the install completes the machine will reboot the virtual machine will re reboot automatically so we are booting into the new virtual machine so during the creation of the virtual machine it tried to download the VMware tools which were uh, add-ons which uh, VMware player tried to provide for easy integration of the guest operating system and the host one and we can try logging into the system so we entered the password that we had set during the virtual machine creation and we are right in the Ubuntu desktop here and you can try to see what is there in the home folder so it will show you the directory structure that is available and you can also start browsing the internet so we start uh, Firefox and it is asking me to authenticate because I am behind a firewall and I'll have to add an exception then I'll be able to browse but I can always browse my local csc.itk.ac.in so I'm always able to access my local websites anyways but for uh, external connections connections to outside IITK network I have to authenticate to my firewall and then I'll be able to go there so right here in the Ubuntu Ubuntu help for example now one more thing that you can do is you can try coming into the virtual machine and for that we have to have some listener here first let's try to find out what is the IP address that this machine has got so I will start a terminal first and on terminal I tried to find out IP address so in this case it has got a particular IP address from my local network let me try to see if I can ping this address from the outside so I will go to my local Windows machine and I type the command I open a shell here so that is inside I'm now inside my Windows machine this black shell here I'll try to say ping 172 dot the IP address I'm typing is the one which my virtual machine has got so it is now able to connect so there is a reply to my ping so that means there is a both way communication possible that is from the outside into the virtual machine and also from within the virtual machine I can go outside uh, onto internet or my local area network so try playing with this virtual machine try adding some more software to your uh, guest operating system and you can also try creating multiple virtual machines and try to set up some networking between them and see how it behaves thank you